Hey everyone, Charlie here and welcome back to another Talking Time episode. This is kind of an update episode, an update of the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel which we monetized, um, when was it? Was it January? A couple months ago? Something like that. So, um, we were able to do it by uh, watching a lot of the videos and uh, finally surpassing that 4,000 watch hour thing. So, we're going to talk about how the YouTube channel has changed since, uh, uh, I guess, in the last couple months or so. So, before we start, you know what to do. Hit the like button, smash the like button, but only do one of the two things, otherwise it'll turn it on and then it'll turn off again. And then leave a comment, let me know what you think, uh, let me know of ideas that you guys have for the channel, and um, you know, share, comment, all that stuff helps the algorithm. We'll talk a little bit about that too. So, recap. Um, I've had a YouTube channel for a long time. I think it's been like, it's like seven or nine years or something. I mean, I had, I had one for a long time, but I didn't really do a whole lot with it. I'd occasionally upload something and it, it, it would basically would, you know, I'd, I'd occasionally upload something, but I didn't upload very regularly. Um, way back then, after a while, I was monetized uh, years and years ago. And I think I made a grand total over several years on YouTube of $100 a hundred dollars from YouTube. This was many, many years ago. And then YouTube uh, changed their requirements for monetization. So background, what is monetization? So you know how when you're watching YouTube videos, some channels uh, have ads. The ads might play at the beginning and or the end and or through the middle if it's 10 minutes or longer. Well, um, monetization is when basically uh, you can put ads on your videos and YouTube chooses which ads go on and stuff. But uh, you get to share in part of the revenue. So YouTube, uh, owned by Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google, they, uh, uh, they'll put ads on it and then they take, I don't know how many percent, probably like 70, I don't know. They take a percent of it and then they give you a percent of it. So the more views you have and the more people are seeing these ads and things like that, uh, the more money you can make. So I was monetized, meaning that I had the ability, they enabled my account so that I could put ads on it or they could put ads on it and I get a little money. And so over many, many, many years, a long time ago, I made a hundred bucks total, um, which was like, you know, it's cool that you make some money off of uh, some of these things, but I wasn't making no massive amounts of, of, of dough, um, you know, considering the amount of work and stuff that went into it. And I didn't do a whole lot of videos, but it was over many years that I finally got a payout of a hundred dollars, I think it was. Anyway, they changed their uh, requirements to be monetized a few years ago. And what they basically said was they said, okay, you have to have at least a thousand subscribers. And remember, subscribers are free. You just click on it and then whenever you make a video, it you know, shows up in their feed or whatever. Uh, you have to have a thousand subscribers and you have to have 4,000 hours of watch time. So what does that mean? So basically that means that over the past 12 months, and it's, a, it's the trailing 12 months. Uh, people have to have watched a total of 4,000 hours of your videos across all your videos. Now, since it's trailing 12 months, um, like if you had a big video from a long time, if you're not continuously uploading videos and people aren't continuously watching stuff, uh, it's easy for like the number to go down, uh, even if you're making new stuff. So that was a threshold that was kind of tough for me. Um, I always had like 3,800 or 3,900 pretty consistently for I think a few years of watch hours. So, but the problem is when I would make a new video or something, you know, the usually new videos oftentimes do better than, maybe not usually, but oftentimes new videos do better than old videos. People are more likely to watch a new video that just came out than one that was uploaded several years ago. Um, with a few exceptions of some kind of go mini viral or whatever. But basically what was happening was that if, even if I uploaded new videos, the old videos would fall off, you know, ones that were over 12 months old of the watch hour count. And so I would never really make it past 4,000. So during the pandemic, uh, I've been uploading a lot more and focusing a lot on kind of trying to grow the YouTube channel. And it's been working pretty well. Um, I've, uh, I think subscribers are way up. I think at the beginning I was, I don't know how many I had, but it's, I'm up, you know, subscribers. It's not anything massive, but hopefully it keeps growing and growing. But I'm up subscribers and um, I managed to pass the 4,000 hour watch hour threshold to be re-monetized. So I was re-monetized. I think it was, you guys gotta have to let me know. I think it was like in January, right? A couple months ago, which means I could put ads back on, which means that I had the potential to make, make some moolah off of YouTube. 
Um, now granted, what I'm making on YouTube is pretty um, not super duper, uh, but it's kind of just neat to get something. So uh, what I've noticed is that consistently uploading a few times a week, um, I've been making about a dollar a day on YouTube. So that's about 30 bucks a month, give or take. Um, it's, uh, uh, you know, so that's good for, that's good for a meal, right? You go, out into, you go out to a restaurant for that. Maybe not a fancy pants one, but a little bit, right? So it's, it's something, it's about a dollar a day. Um, now, considering how many hours it takes to make each video, uh, from setting up the cameras and the lighting to uh, transferring everything to up uh, to editing everything. Editing takes a ton of time. You're getting the audio levels right and the reverb and the EQ and all that stuff, uh, and then uploading and then and there's always oftentimes problems with uploading, especially with Facebook. They're pretty annoying sometimes in terms of their video upload things. But it's a it's a lot of work. So each video, even if it's only three minutes long or ten minutes long, can take hours and hours um, to actually from start to finish, from you know deciding you're going to make the video until it's released. Um, so it's a lot of work. So a, a dollar a day is is not great, but it's better than nothing. So and you know it has the potential to hopefully grow. So that's kind of what it's been like. So it's gone from. Uh, basically, I had a little bit for many, many years, a long time ago, then it went to nothing, and now we got re-monetized, now it's up to about a dollar a day. So thank you all for watching. Um, another interesting thing is how it works in terms of copyright. So um, not long ago, I, you know, I, I do a big variety of, 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 of videos on my channel, everything from like, you know, putting up shelves in my garage to improvising, to learn to play piano episodes, to talking time episodes like this, to, you know, a whole variety of stuff. And um, some of what I do is like uh, K-pop stuff because I like K-pop and, you know, it's fun and people like listening. And so I'll oftentimes either do a, a K-pop, I, I might do a K-pop thing of, of just me solo or I might like play along with like one of the music videos. So, um, I actually got to be on Korean national news a few weeks ago. If you haven't watched it, check it out in my, um, in my channel. Uh, I got to be in the Korean news because of like doing a cover of, in the, uh, doing a cover of, uh, BTS, which is a big Korean pop group, um, on my channel in the style of you, uh, in the style of YouTube, in the style of Chopin. And so I've done some BTS stuff. And for example, one about a week or two ago kind of went viral. I think it got posted on a uh, BTS Twitter, uh, a Twitter page for uh, BTS fans. It wasn't an official one, but it was like a, a fan page Twitter account. And so in the course of like a day, I got like 17, 1800 views. Um, but of course, it's a cover of a song written by someone else. And it's interesting. So, you know, on a, on a video where like, uh, recently, I had a video of me playing a part of the Rachmaninoff Concerto Number no. Two with with Molly singing, and it was only it wasn't very long; it was a few minutes long tops, and it might have only gotten I don't know what the video views are now, but it was maybe only fifty or seventy views, very few views. I think I made like fifty or seventy cents on that video, something like that, right? To put it in perspective, on that video I did of that BTS cover. I got like 1,700 views, so like 50 or 70 versus 1,700, but I made about seven cents on that video. So on the Molly video with 50 to 70 views, I got, I don't know, 50 or seven, or I got like 70 cents or something like that. On the, uh, on the BTS one with 1,700 views, I got like seven cents. So it makes a massive, massive difference in terms of, um, if you're playing something that you own all the rights to versus you're playing something that's like a cover of a copyrighted work or something like that. Because what they do is they share the revenue out with, with, with everyone. I, d I knew that was gonna be the case, but I didn't really know, because I hadn't really ex had any experience with this, how exactly how much of a difference it makes. And it obviously makes a big difference. Um, so, I mean, but it's still cool to play, you know, BTS stuff and other K-pop stuff because, you know, it, you know, it, it's fun for one thing, and it attracts people that might not otherwise be in my um, normal uh, audience. And it's, you know, it's, it's a fun thing to do, and I like doing it. But it's interesting just looking at the financial side of it uh, from YouTube, that there's that vast a discrepancy, you know? So anyway, so this is the kind of, I, I just want to kind of share with you kind of the updates of kind of behind the scenes what's going on with, with YouTube. Um, oftentimes what I've been doing lately is to try to save on some time. What I'll do is, Every week or two, I'll record, I'll like 
you know, set up everything, cameras and everything, and then record seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 videos all at once. Um, and then, you know, I can transfer them and then over time I can, you know, edit the videos and stuff. So it still takes a tremendous amount of time per video. Um, but at least then I'm not setting up and taking down stuff every single day, which can be really, really, uh, time consuming, really time consuming. Um, not that it's not, not doing it that way, but you get the point. So, uh, anyway, um, so I've been doing that. So today I actually recorded a whole bunch of stuff and, um, what I'll do is I'll eventually I'll upload it and eventually, or I'll transfer to my computer, eventually upload it or edit it and upload it and then release them, you know, kind of spread out. Right. So another thing I've, I've been kind of playing with is how many videos to release. Uh, because if you put too many out, it potentially could be a not good thing. And if you put too few out, you know, it's probably not a good thing too. So there's probably a sweet spot somewhere that I'm trying to kind of figure out what that sweet spot number is. Um, I know that the minimum you really want to do is probably once a week is kind of the minimum of some kind of a video. Um, and some people do every day, which might be too much because, you know, if you, if people aren't even watching the last videos you uploaded, if you upload a new one, it kind of overshadows the last one you did. So still playing with that. And also the time of upload, um, because you know, if you upload it at a certain time of the day, uh, it might get more or less likes and clicks and engagement. Uh, so I talked to, talked about engagement earlier. So engagement is basically, uh, how much the audience responds to, uh, your, your video. So if you have a video that gets put out and this applies like Facebook too, if you just have a post that gets put out, um, and I actually think it, I actually think it is even more so with Facebook engagement is stuff like likes, comments, uh, shares, things like that. Um, the more people do that, uh, out of the percentage of people who see or are exposed to your video or post, uh, the more, uh, the video might get boosted on Facebook. It's kind of to an extreme. If I post something on Facebook, I have like 70 some hundred uh, followers on my Facebook page. If I post something, um, and people don't immediately click like and, and comment and stuff like that, it'll oftentimes die and only maybe 15 people will have seen it, which is really kind of crazy and, you know, kind of poopy really. Um, but that's just kind of the way it is. So engagement rates are really important, especially with Facebook, but also with YouTube, because the more engagement there is on YouTube, the more likely they might recommend your video to people who aren't even in your audience. And that can really help grow the audience, which is super. So anyway, I'm rambling way, way too long about all this stuff, but I hope you are all doing well. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. And uh, thanks for being with me on this, uh, uh, on this YouTube journey. You know, thanks for watching and sharing and all that stuff. Leave me comments of what type of uh, content you like what you want more of, um, things like that. Any suggestions for stuff? Um, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to do them, but um, you know, I like reading comments and stuff like that. I try to respond to, to at least some of them um, as much as I can. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I hope that you're all doing well, staying safe and healthy, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. All right, bye-bye.